So using the router, the next step was to cut the grooves in the tenons, which I have now done, and had set this up for a one inch depth cut in the, uh, in the tenon, and it turned out pretty well. And uh, next step is to go ahead and see if they'll fit inside. I did check on the second railing right here to see if that slot would fit. And lo and behold, it does. So the slot is wide enough. It's actually nice because it gives me a little bit of leeway on the metal. So that will give me a little bit of play when it actually comes time to fit these on the railing. So let's go inside and see how potentially it's going to look in place. So back inside on the railing, we're starting to get close, uh, closer to finishing the one side. You can see I've got the tenons cut with the notches and we'll go ahead and load up the metal railing and see if in fact they fit. So with the railing in place in the notches you can see how they fit on the sides there and Again, as I mentioned out in the garage, I have a little bit of play in the railing, forward and back, which will be helpful when I put the top section on and tighten everything down. It should allow me to snug things up nicely. But again, that's what the railing is going to look like. This is the long run. So again, getting a little bit closer as we go along. So the next step I'm working on, as we've got the notches cut for the bottom of the railing, is I'm going to be cutting the upper banister, the railing, in this long section, and then the cross section to basically mirror what was done on the bottom. But again, this is going to be for the upper railing, the upper banister. So for the upper banister, I've got a log that I've already peeled. And I need to cut a section that's 79 and a half, actually 79 and 3 quarter inches. Don't want to get that wrong. 79 and 3 quarters inches for the banister. Um, one of the cuts is going to be an angle cut, so I'll do that first and then measure the 79 and 3 quarters from that notch. So that's the next step. So I just made the cut on the long length of log at 45 degree angle. Hopefully that'll be about right. But now we'll be cutting the 79 and 3 quarter inch lengths. What I'm about to do is to uh, start cutting the tenon for the upper portion of the banister, so we'll give it a try here. So I have my tenon cutter set up. This will handle about a four and a half inch log. I did have to trim this piece a little bit for it to fit. This tends to be a booger um, when you're doing it by yourself. Normally I'd have my wife or somebody holding this down uh, but I'm here by myself today, so we'll give it a try and just take it slow and easy. So you can see it's starting to get that cut into the shape of the tenon and slow and easy is the trick on this one.
So the tenon is uh, starting to take shape. Again, you just have to take this slow and easy. Again, this is going to be the upper banister. This is a log that earlier I was cutting the 45 degree cut on. So this is going to be at one end. And then this is going to go in basically up against the wall and to the upright support there. So just keep on working a little bit more to get this tenon cut. The actual cut will be about one and a half inches deep. That's what I'm shooting for here. So this is the finished tenon that's been cut. It's now one and a half inches deep. And again, this is the long log. And this is a sample of some earlier pieces that I had cut um, doing the tenon. These are the uh, upright supports that we've seen earlier in the video for the metal railing itself. Uh, I've got four more um, that basically will be supporting the railing down from this banister. So these will be basically going like this and then going down to hold the metal railing. The actual tenon tool itself, you get a good glimpse here. I know it's a little hard to see. But in the bottom, there is an adjustable bolt, and that's what uh, determines how deep the tenon actually is. And then, of course, you have the cutting blade on the side. This is probably the most specialized tool I own. I have a smaller version of this for smaller logs. Um, it's come in handy. I've used this a lot, actually. And I actually got this through log tenoncutters.com so it's been a pretty uh, useful tool for me so of course the next step on these logs after you've got them cut the tenon cut is a lot of sanding and I'm using a little palm sander 80 grit to start with and I'll finish with 120 but basically this is the tenon after it's been sanded and smoothed now I'm working my way down the log Basically to get rid of, I know it's a little harder to see, but to get rid of the um, draw knife marks. So if you can see these sharp little ridges here, those are from the draw knife when I was basically taking the bark off and getting through the uh, next layer, I think you call it the cambium of the bark. But the next step is to finish sanding this log and then uh, go forward from there. So. What do you do on a nice day in January in Denver? You get out a log and you sand it. So here's the finished banister, the upper banister. It's been sanded with 80 grit, followed by 120 grit. So basically it's ready to go. Um, got to drill the holes in it for the bottom supports where the uh, tenons will go. But uh, basically just wanted to show you what it looks like after it's been sanded. How do you like my fancy workbenches? Aren't those special? Uh, I've got a workbench over here, uh, but quite honestly, I find that the uh, upside down trash can or the upside right trash can actually works a little bit better for a lot of the sanding work.